Welcome to Two Dudes Audio, my name is Sean and today we are going to be reviewing the Harbinger 2000 series, the V2408. This is a powered eight inch speaker. The only problem is I had another one right here on the table and I seem to have lost it. I don't know. Yes? The napkin, it couldn't possibly be under this nap. Oh my gosh, it is under this napkin. Wow, you are such a little guy, aren't you? Gucci, 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 you're so tiny, you got lost. It's fine, it's here now, that's the important thing. The better question though is, can this thing put off any decent sound? We're gonna find out. Something that we noticed immediately while unboxing this eight inch speaker was the rubber feet on the bottom. Actually, they come off very easily. One of them fell off on us. It just takes a little pull and they, they stretch right past the screw and they come right off. So one of the potential fixes for that would just be a, a, an added washer. Chaz, do we have a washer? Could we get a washer to reinforce these feet a little better so that that doesn't happen? Oh, um, you keep one washer in that large case. Just in case. A simple fix for this would just be to put the rubber foot on, add a lock washer, and then feed your screw through and tighten her up. And now the rubber can't stretch past that and it's really much more secure on there. We have it paired with the VS12. We actually have the subwoofer turned off for you know, demonstration purposes. We're going to play some music through it, give it a frequency sweep, see just how loud 100 watts RMS, 250 bucks for this thing will give you. It does claim about 65 hertz to 22,000 hertz, or you know, the audible range for what an eight inch will do. I don't know if it will actually hit 65. We're gonna see. So without any more talking, let's just get right to it. Everything's all the way up. Oh, wait for the bass to drop. It, that's fully that's cranked. That's the most distorted. Oh, it's clipping. It's clipping. Oh. You can hear that, that soft limit. It's protecting itself right now. Yeah. Because that bass should sound worse than it actually does. Yeah. That's doing a good job. Yeah, the volume just drops out yeah, so that's, much. That's to protect the yeah, sound. yeah. It's a, so a it lot of, a lot of Bluetooth speakers these days. I notice, like with all your like JBL Pill speakers and like all of them, when you crank them all the way up and the bass hits, it does the same exact thing. It just dips the volume But you'd rather down. have your volume dropping than your speaker blowing up. Yep. So, yeah. yep. Uh, take my money. Hey, why don't we try pink noise next? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'd say about 35, 40 feet away. So now we're gonna do a frequency sweep. Yes. We're gonna see just how the eight inch sounds alone. Again, this is with no subwoofer or anything. It's just one top speaker both the treble and bass set to noon and the gain about three o'clock. So about 75% gain. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Ah, ah, there it is. <laughs> he really likes that high end. Oh God, that last, wow. that last part. So there was really nothing from what, 50, oh my 50 God. hertz to all the way up to what? I mean, hey, for an eight inch top, 100 watts RMS, you can't, you can't expect the world, but there it is. All right, so now this is just a microphone test. The vocals sound nice and clear. Why don't we try this as a monitor? Why well, if I did a scream? <laughs> it just sounded like a car screeching its brakes. 
Why don't we try it as a monitor speaker? So there are people that might want to use that as a monitor speaker for like a small gig, a small venue. So if you just have the mic directly plugged into this unit and not using any mixer or anything, you do have only like a three foot radius before you're gonna get nasty feedback. So if we would cut some of the high end off the EQ, is that gonna improve the issue with feedback? Yeah, sure. Okay, all right, let's see. All right, all right. If you would please put your ear right next to the speaker <laughs> uh, no, for I'm this test. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> you, you go right ahead. Oh, that does actually change that. Yeah. Now, if you were to cut the treble down completely, I have the treble knob all the way down. It does kind of for a monitor, though. I mean, honestly, like this is this is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I can. You could fit that anywhere. Any, yeah. Any small. Oh, yeah. Because like, most venues they stick you in the corner, like literally, like you have a corner and but you want to be able to hear yourself, you want a monitor speaker, that's going to fit anywhere, no problem. Oh, dude, for sure. I mean, like, come on. Well, Chaz, it is that special time where we tear this thing apart and see what it's made of. Oh, there it is. Now, I forgot my Bowie knife, so I don't know how I got it. actually... Right, let's take the grill off. Wow. Nice. As professional looking for such a small speaker. It is, it's just smaller scale, but it, it looks just like it's Big Brothers. And they're all made with a gas injected polymer. Let's uh, take it apart. Oh man, there's spades on here. Someone say, oh, spades. Okay, all right. Spades. Tired of it, get them going. Push terminals only. All right. Teamwork. Makes looks sense. like we're working with, it looks like we have a pretty decent amp. With this eight inch driver, we actually have a pretty decent magnet. It is actually built really well. Not a lot of eight inch woofers are gonna have a pole vented voice coil as well mm. on the back of the magnet. It's also flared, which is a nice little touch. It has regular tinsel leads, a normal spider, has a bifold accordion surround. So with this new Barry 2000 series eight inch, we actually have a pretty decent amplifier. There's nothing lacking in terms of composition. You have decent caps. You have a good transistor bank on both sides. Even though it's only about 50 watts RMS, it has more than enough transistors, more than enough capacitors. You have decent sized wiring. If I had to guess, this is probably around 12 to 14 gauge. Harbinger never really lacks on material composition. And we're gonna take a look at the compression driver inside of here. So we have the whole front fascia off of the Harbinger unit. Harbinger is putting in extra effort when it comes to production. For only 50 watts RMS, I truly feel like that is overkill. Here's a little compression driver. It is a tiny little guy. Aww. Look how cute that is. That's adorable. Look at this little guy. It's so little. Oh my god. We have a one and a quarter inch throat, and we have a probably two and a quarter inch magnet. Got it. Nice. Oh, little little tiny washer too. This little compression driver. We tried looking it up. We don't really know what the composition of the driver itself is. It is kind of transparent. It's uh maybe that's new alien technology. This is the high frequency driver. We're gonna put everything back together. We're gonna give it a free air test. Build quality wise, you do see the acoustic fill on the inside. There is plenty of bracing. It is their injected polymer style cabinet. It has a full front fascia that disconnects. And we're just gonna get straight back to what we know best and that's abusing it and giving it a nice free air test with a bass frequency sweep. About 30 hertz, 40 hertz, 50. Uneventful. And this is at half volume. I'm half satisfied. It's 40. Oh yeah. That's I mean, some movement. That is moving now. Oh, 
fuego. It's still not bad though. Why does it keep getting quieter? I say fuego. Yeah, back to the plate amp is around 85.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Not really. No, it's not warm or not nothing. Too bad. It's just weird because like you saw the first test and by the 10th or 11th test, I mean, it, it like really dropped down in volume through outdoor testing, through the free air, through us taking it apart, looking at the guts, all that kind of stuff. These guys are, you know, I'd give them a solid six out of 10 dudes when it comes to sound quality, build quality wise, they're pretty good. The only thing I don't really like is with the rubber feet. We did have a little, put little tiny washers on the bottom these feet actually ended up coming off you've witnessed the internals you've witnessed the horn everything about it it's only 50 watts rms you can't expect the world from it it does do what it needs to do correctly if you're doing smaller venues if you're doing any kind of monitoring they do really well they are a little on the pricier side if i if it was me i would probably gauge these around like 179 dollars you know 180 bucks roughly around that range and the versatility the capability it's really good. You still have multiple inputs, treble, bass, Bluetooth, all that. You don't get the DSP app, but it does have internal DSP, which you did hear. The DSP limiting is a little extreme, but again, it's just to save you. It's to save your drivers. It's to save you extra cost. You are getting really solid build quality. The bracing internally is really good. I think ideally these would be awesome for monitors for a DJ. Yeah, they would. I think that's that's the ideal purpose of these. Yeah, my opinion. Mo monitor use, I would 100% agree. We're gonna test them a little more outside at a, a somewhat of a larger type of area for an eight inch, not bad. That being said, this has been another episode of Two Dudes Audio. We'll see you next time for the 10 inch review.